Where is your time going? What are you already doing with your time? In this lesson, I would like you to make a list of what you're already doing. If you sense hesitance in my tone, it's because I think I'm already sensing that there's going to be hesitance from you. <laughs> Hopefully not, but I know how it is. We don't always want to be honest about how we're spending our time. This is just for you, unless I decide to offer an option where I do coaching or counseling. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet or not, but this is just for you. Be honest with yourself. This isn't going to work if you're not honest. Honestly, I think a lot of us spend our time just looking at social media. It's hard not to. We have all these devices competing for our attention. Like right now where I sit, I'm looking at my phone making this video. In my lap, I have a laptop. Or in front of me, I have a TV with Roku attached. So I can watch YouTube, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Hulu, anything. Do you know how hard it is to not just want to get a fix of dopamine by just going and seeing what's new on YouTube, seeing if there's any new shows available on Hulu? We constantly fight that urge. But the only way you're going to turn your ADD into passive income is if you make a concentrated effort like I'm doing. Find something that's fun, though. That's why we're not going to start with something that you're going to hate. We're going with what you're already doing. Let's try to translate that, if possible, into passive income. And yes, there are ways to do that. If you want, you can go as far as to do a complete log of your day. Just as you go through your day, you know, you wake up. What do you do? Do you eat breakfast? Do you make breakfast for someone else? Do you wake up early? Do you wake up late? For me, like I wake up, I walk dogs, get them situated, make sure they have something to eat. They have their water. I have a to-do list, like a lot of us. One of the worst things you can do is just not really have a plan and just let your dopamine, your reward system dictate where your hours go. And I don't think a lot of us realize that's what it is. Dopamine is our reward center. It's what makes us happy. It's hard to fight that. It's like a constant drug within ourselves. We're all drug addicts. We're all addicted to this, whether we know it or not. So what we want to do is shift your dopamine into something that can actually pay you back. I mean, a lot of people, I know you're busy. You might be taking care of kids. You might be working all day. You might be driving. Start making a note of all this. Some of these are ways where maybe you can knock out a few birds with one stone. Like if you want to do a podcast, you might be able to do something while you're driving. But anyway, just make a list of what you're already doing, especially what fun things are you doing? How much time do you spend on YouTube or TikTok or any other social media? Another thing I think that eats away a lot of people's time that they don't realize is just text messages. This phone of ours. Me personally, the only way I can get anything done is if I'm just on silent or do not disturb all day long. Because if I sat there and just was a slave to my phone, to every notification, every time I get a DM, every time somebody just wants to talk to me, I wouldn't get anything else done. It's different when you work for someone else. I remember when I was on other people's payroll, I am embarrassed now about the amount of time that I actually spent emailing friends or talking on the phone. Still end up getting your work done, but I think a lot of us do that. And then of course I've had jobs where I didn't have a, a second to spare for that, where I was just busy the whole day. Seconds add up to hours the same way pennies add up to dollars. I apologize if you're outside the U.S. or if you don't use dollars. It adds up fast, those little fragments, especially because what you don't realize is every time you take a second to maybe answer that DM, I get it. Sometimes you have a sick family member or somebody who never calls or whatever. You just have to block out time to work on stuff because if you keep letting them take your time away, it can take a while to get back to where we were, to get our attention back to what we were supposed to be doing. Let's say you have something baking in an oven and you open that oven door. There are different statistics, but every second that door is open, the oven temperature can decrease like 50 to 100 degrees. Google isn't cooperating with me right now, but I was told years ago by a home economics teacher that it can take a half hour to an hour for the oven to reheat again just for keeping it open for a few seconds. That's kind of like our attention spans. If you're in the middle of something, like me personally, like if I'm in the middle of something and I'm interrupted, these little nickel and dime interruptions, you know, someone wants to text you. To them it's not much, but it completely knocks you out of where you were, all the thoughts out of your head. There's a Mad Men episode where the copywriters, the ones who, you know, write, they write the jingles and the commercials and stuff. This one, was he was on a roll and he had all these ideas in his head. And someone said something and he goes, oh, you just flushed the toilet in my head. I don't think a lot of us realize every time you are interrupted, if you allow yourself to constantly be open to these interruptions, it can take you forever to get back to the zone where you're working, unless you ha actually know what you're working on. If you stay focused, that can be really hard to do, especially if you already have attention deficit problems. Oh, what was I even doing? And you don't even realize. And that can even drive you back to your Roku or the For You page. That's okay. Let's just try to get a handle on that, if that's what's going on with you. It may or may not be. I honestly think that's how it is for most of us, though. It can be a constant struggle to keep yourself in that zone where you're creative and working and focused on something. That's why I want to break this down into small chunks. As you make a list of what you're actually spending time on, I want you to also start thinking about 
how much time you can devote to this. Like I, when I go into the recipes, into the step-by-step -step instructions, I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible so that it doesn't take much time. So it's something that you can fit into the little fragments of your day if that's all you have. Because I know you may be working two jobs for all I know, three jobs and taking care of kids. Or you may have all the time in the world. I don't know. Sometimes having too much time can work against you because then your attention span really gets out there really gets warped. Sometimes being busy forces you to be focused, so that can actually be a good thing. As you start making a list of what your time is actually spent on, whether it's socializing, whatever it is, think about how much time you can devote to this. When I talk about like how to log your time, what exactly are you looking for here? Let's say you spend a lot of your time just doing internet searches. What are you searching for? Is there something you find yourself searching for a lot? Is there a certain subject? I mean, I certainly wouldn't expect you to list all of your internet searches unless you wanted to. You could even go back through your browser history and do a real deep dive and see if there are any themes like maybe there's a hobby you keep searching for maybe just an interest maybe tv shows again i always go back to tv shows because if you're already spending time watching tv shows or looking up tv shows or finding other people's opinions about tv shows you just watched that might be one of your niches maybe that's where you need to start is a youtube channel tiktok channel about your tv that you like anyway just start listing what you spend your time on is it a hobby a craft are you searching for something? Are you shopping? Are you taking care of somebody? Just start making a list of that. Let's see how you're already spending time into a schedule that allows you to create something for passive income. Going back to the kitchen scenario, let's say that your money is your ingredients. You're organizing your pantry. You just have a bunch of stuff laying all over the place. You don't even know what you have or how much you have of each thing, okay? I'm going to just liken that to food in the pantry, stuff you put in the freezer, you're organizing that. Time... I'm going to liken that to your kitchen equipment. Maybe you have so much stuff scattered around, you don't even know what kind of mixers you have. You don't know what kind of oven. Do you have one of those fancy Viking stoves that like rich people have? <laughs> or do you just have a microwave? What kind of pots and pans do you got? Do you got a double boiler? You got blunt pans? What can you make? Do you have whisks? What kind of tools do you have? As you go about your time, like as you think about this, like especially because a lot of us spend a lot of our time socializing or helping people or solving problems for other people, even if it's problems you don't enjoy solving, okay? Don't neglect the things you hate. Still turn that into something that you like. Make a list of it. What I'm getting to is this. If there are stories that you recite over and over, anecdotes, maybe you don't even realize it, but you tend to tell the people the same stories you learned over and over, like the time your car broke down, you learned a lesson from it, or the time you saw somebody's true colors, you, you learned about narcissists the hard way. Maybe your friends or family or even coworkers see you as an expert at something. Could even be something you hate. Like me, when I was an accountant, I'm still an accountant, but I don't do it for money anymore. I always became the Excel guru. I always ended up giving like free Excel lessons to people, like for real. Like I would draw up handbooks and guides and everything because I, it just came easily to me. It doesn't mean I love Excel, I, although you are going to see me use Google Sheets a lot, probably, because it comes easily to me and I do enjoy it. But, you know, that's not something I want to do all the time. It's just something I happen to know. It's just an asset. It's just part of my arsenal. Part of my kitchen is Excel data. I'm really good with pivot tables and just really long sheets of data, extracting data in ways other people can't. Just certain things come naturally to me. What comes naturally to you? Think about this too. Think about people you don't hear from very often. But when you do, it's about something specific. A neighbor who knows that you have a certain tool and they want to borrow. Why are they borrowing that? Just make a note of it because that could lead to something you don't even realize. You have an advantage there that someone else doesn't have. We're just trying to line up what you actually have to work with. Again, it doesn't have to be something that you love. Don't be afraid that you're going to get pigeonholed into doing this the rest of your life. Because I know how it is. Sometimes you get asked about stuff that you hate. Like me in writing books, when I tell people that I was a best-selling author, they automatically, that's all they think about with me. They think, well, you just need to do that with your life. Why are you doing anything else? They don't realize I hated it. I'm going to be writing nonfiction. That I can do because I'm more interested in that. But I really can't imagine ever writing fiction again. Maybe, who knows, but I don't like it. Just because I was good at it that one time for a while there to some people, I mean, some people hated me. But to the people who loved me, I'm sorry if you found me that way because I do put some of my Liz Jones stuff on my author pages and I'm sorry. I don't mean to trash talk my own books, but it just became miserable for me. It became a nightmare. Still, it's something I know how to do. It's still something I'm going to use. I still know how to publish books all over the place. I still know grammar rules. I still can teach someone how to tell a story. And who knows, I might end up writing again. I could probably edit someone's book or help them do it more than I could just come up with my own. That's just an asset for me in my arsenal. That's part of my kitchen. What are you good at, even if you don't like being good at it? Maybe it's a skill you had to learn for some reason. Make a list. 
Are you spending time on it? Are you helping people with it? What do people consider you an expert about? Even if you don't consider yourself an expert, what are you already giving free advice about, free opinions? Even go back through your texts. You might see some gold there that you didn't realize. Questions that you're always answering for people. Don't be afraid to list the things that you hate. There still might be something in there for you. Part of your kitchen. Might be an underused part or might be a part you only use once in a while, but you just never know. This is about taking an inventory of who you are and getting your test kitchen set up so that we can work on some recipes. Just start making a list. Don't overlook the obvious. Do you spend time playing video games? Definitely add that to the list. Listening to music, creating Spotify lists, recommending music to people, curating. You might not think you're doing much by just gathering info, but that's actually a value to provide. Curating. That means getting a lot of information in one place. Like your job might not be to be an expert, but just to be like a guidepost. Imagine that you're an exit sign on the interstate directing people to their destination. You don't have to be an expert. You can just be a compiler of information. A person who has a lot of opinions, who has a lot of strong opinions about certain movies, a certain genre of music. When I watch YouTube, I watch stuff like what happened to people you don't even think about. Like I'm in my 40s, so there's a channel where someone has done a deep dive into what happened to like all the Soul Train dancers. <laughs> There's a lot I learned about Soul Train. That's fascinating to me. I love that. I love just deep dives into pop culture. And honestly, this isn't stuff I'm going to do on my own. I don't have the time to go Google or figure out what happened to the Soul Train dancers. But I appreciate that someone on YouTube did that. And I hope they're making money from it. If they have ads on YouTube, then they are. I love that. And you may think, well, what kind of value is that? Who cares about that? Honestly, when I'm having a bad day... I mean, I've got complex PTSD. I have do a lot in my life. Things that make me happy are very important to me. Those YouTube channels are important to me. They are healing. They are therapeutic just by bringing me joy. Don't underestimate that. Maybe you're just someone who likes to research. There's definitely a place for you. If there's something you're into, a hobby, just think about what you spend your time doing internet searches about or talking about. Maybe if you had more time, you would research something. Sometimes people love that. Like, yeah, it's something they could have Googled themselves, but they're not going to. Personally, I love that. Like, I just was on TikTok and there was a guy talking about the second largest man-made hole in the world. It's in Siberia. It's a diamond mine. He's no expert. He was just sharing something he thought was interesting. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the way he shared it. I enjoyed the fact that he wasn't an expert. Do you see where I'm going with this? If it's something you're passionate about and you're interested in, make a list. What are you searching for already? What are you thinking about searching for? Like, maybe you're like, oh, I don't have time. Maybe you're one of those people who's just so busy taking care of kids or working five jobs that you don't have time to internet search. What would you search for if you had the time? Make a list.